Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL series episode 91. This is Frame Buffer Part 2. We're going to be looking at the same code base as the last time. And finally, seeing how we use those frame buffer objects to ultimately draw out these objects with textures on to our texture, or I guess our, our objects here. So uh, we had the off screen width and height, which was new from the last episode. We went ahead and initialized our frame buffer object and set it onto the state. Let's go ahead and jump down and see what else is new within the application so that we can use the FBOs. Um, getting into the draw of this um, application here, we have one new little set of uh, um, logic we're going to check and see if we have an FBO. If we do, we're going to bind the textures from the FBO um, onto the item. And if we don't, then we're going to set it as the application texture. Uh, as we jump back here, you can see we still have a regular cube, and it has its own regular texture here. Of So you can see it does not all of them don't have to have the FBO. So that's an interesting way. You can actually, if you wanted to, you could set this texture uh, when we initialize it. You can throw it into this array even if you wanted to do that. Uh, but it's easier to keep track of it because each FEO would have its own texture. So um, that's basically it for that. As we scroll down here, we're going to check if it has an FEO. We're going to set it to true or false um, as well. And that's just going to be used a little bit later in our logic. Uh, as you can see here, any cube that we want to have an FBO, we're going to set true to it as well. And so we're doing that for a couple of them. And then in our draw, this is kind of where the magic happens. So uh, for, per, uh, for purposes of this application, I just wrote all this out uh, iteratively, but you could probably clean it up a little bit, make it a little uh, nicer, uh, maybe moving things into objects and whatnot. So first we're going to bind the frame buffer with the applications frame buffer that we've set in the state and set the viewport to that screen size that we had come up with above. We're just going to clear it to be something slightly different than uh, black and clear it. Again we're going to set the perspective now to the off screen height and width. Uh, it doesn't really matter for purposes of our application now and then look at. Uh, within each of the objects we're going to say if they have an FBH, FBO and they're texture based they have a texture, we're going to end up setting the state's FBO onto each object so they have access to that a little more accessibly and easy, easily. Then we're going to draw all these out. Uh, we are not drawing objects that have FBOs out. We're only drawing objects that don't have the FBO. So the reason for that is you can't uh, ultimately draw into itself over and over again. So if you look here, you, when you see on these objects drawn here, so this is what the application looks like right now, you don't really have uh, this other two cubes on itself. Now you can see a little hint of a reflection of a cube here, and the reason for that is it's from the cube that's within this cube, uh, if that makes sense. So it's kind of ultimately repeated, but um, and you can see it back there. So it goes back and forth. Um, Actually, I lied. That's actually the uh, cube that's behind for the uh, uh, um, the back side of this that you can see. So I'm gonna jump back here. Uh, excuse me. So anyway, we're not drawing out cubes that have the FBO. Otherwise, you will end up with errors um, or rather warnings. So we're just gonna continue to draw down. Now, after we've drawn out all of the objects with the FBO, we just all we simply do is null out the frame buffer and this changes everything back to the color buffer. So this allows us to, we have drawn the objects, uh, drawn everything out such that we're drawing onto the frame buffer object. Now that we're drawing onto the color object, we have those already on there. And so now we could set the canvas a height and width back to where it needs to be. This time when we draw it, those frame buffer objects which have been set here and drawn are going to be redrawn every everything's going to be redrawn this time um, but this time it will show up with the appropriate uh, texture on it 
based off the current screen. So you can do some really interesting things with that. Um, and then finally, if we scroll down, this is where we have the frame buffer initialization. So uh, that's it for this episode. If you like what you saw, give me a like and a subscribe. That'll help me on YouTube a lot. Share this on social media, if you will. Uh, go to programmingtil.com and sign up for my newsletter. And follow me on social media, on Twitter, and whatnot. Have a great one. Thanks.